But before I could say anything, we were in a car off to the airport. I was furious. I wasn't going, no matter what. They were being ridiculous. But who could play at that game? We were already on the plane, and I knew I had to act fast. Oh no, there's a bomb on the plane. It's in their bags. Isabella, what are you doing? Hi, I'm Isabella, and I'm like Indiana. No, Isabella Jones. I've lived in almost 60 different countries, and my story is truly insane. But before I begin, please like and subscribe. I've got a weird family. We moved around a lot, and I mean a lot a lot. When I was four, my parents adopted my brother Patrick. It was so cool, but he was weird, just like mom and dad. Sometimes I thought he might be a robot because whenever I hugged him too tight, he'd make a beeping sound. I told you, he's weird. Even though my family seemed to get more and more strange every time we moved, Patrick loved moving around. Dad always said it was for his job, but I never saw him go to work. Whenever I asked, he'd just make some annoying excuse to leave. Sorry, I uh, really have to fart. Huh? It's gonna be a bad one. Ew, Dad, gross. As if that wasn't strange enough, they changed their personalities with each new move. Everyone needs a fresh start every now and then. You know now and then doesn't mean every next week or month, right? Isabella, stop talking back to your mother and start pogo sticking with us. This is my favorite family personality yet. My mom homeschooled us and it was great. But I kept dreaming of going to a real school and making friends. But anytime someone found out just how weird my parents were, girls, <gasps> come on in. Grab a candle. We're having a seance. Or when we encountered minor setbacks, ugh, this guy messed up my grocery cart. We were pretty much guaranteed to move the next day. By the time I turned 13, watching MSA videos became my favorite pastime. I saw these characters my age going to high school. I felt like I was missing out on the most important part of being a teenager, socialization. I wanted to go to the mall for hours and blab on and on to my BFF about how cute Johnny was from the science labs. On my 15th birthday, I realized my window to lead a normal teenage high school life was closing. So I decided to convince my parents to settle down. I watched a lot of Shark Tank to prepare for my parental pitch. Then I sat my parents down. Hello, sharks. Uh, I mean, mom and dad. You know when you go on a roller coaster, but there are so many quick moves that you feel like you're gonna throw up? Well, that's kind of like my life right now. What if we just stayed put for a while? Maybe just while I finish high school? This was doing nothing. I had to bring in the big guns. My brother. Come on, Patrick. Help me out here. What do I get in return? Ugh, so annoying. Fine, anything. I want you to dress up as a gorilla and run through the mall screaming, I'm a stinky sister. Really, Patrick? You're 13. Surely you're a little more mature than that, right? But I was desperate. She's right, and I want to stay here too. We had no idea us always moving around affected did you kids this much? All right, we'll stay. Are you sure? We've had no run-ins for years. Let's give it a shot for the kids. I had no huh? idea what they were talking about. It was pretty suspicious, but I let that thought go. Soon, Patrick and I enrolled in public school. Normalcy, here I come. On the first day of school, I was so excited. I went to wake Patrick up so we could go to school together, but he just went back to sleep. Ugh. So I got there and sure enough, it was locked. I guess 4 a.m. was a little too early, huh? But I was already dressed, and there was no way I was turning back. Luckily, I found an open window. And by that, I mean it was open after I broke it. I found my classroom and picked a desk right up front so the teacher would know I was super serious. I could rest my head for a few minutes, right? But I fell asleep and woke up to this annoying girl poking me on the head. Hey, you're in my seat. No, this is my seat. I got here extra early. They're assigned. Is this your first day on planet Earth? Or what, weirdo? How dare she? call me that. Doesn't she know? This is me being normal. I am not a weirdo. Yes, you are. What are you even wearing? You look like a troll booger. My mom made this for me. She took it way too far. She chucked my stuff around like a rag doll, then attacked me. I was so angry that I grabbed her hair, but it came off. She was wearing a wig. Everyone started laughing at her. Ugh! I'm gonna end you. I got a bit scared and did what smart people do in that situation. I bolted, but she started chasing me down the hall. Please move, thank you, sorry, coming through. I turned down the hallway and hit a dead end. Oh no, my high school experience was about to come crashing down before I even had my first class. Just then, a strong hand grabbed me, quickly, in here, and I was pulled into a janitor's closet with the most <gasps> handsome kid I'd ever seen. He placed a tattooed hand on my shoulder. It was so cool, but I didn't even know high school kids could get tattoos. 
shoes. I guess he saw me staring. Like what you see? My dad gave me permission, and we got matching ones. Anyway, are you okay? I felt like my face had frozen solid, and my drool was now an icicle hanging from my lower lip. I just saw you take on Kelsey. That was brave. She's a total brat. We'll be safe here. I'm Daniel. I'm, uh, Isabella. It's my first date. I, I mean, day. It's really scary for a first day. Here's my number if you want a friend or... Was this what it felt like to fall deeply and madly in love with a boy after knowing him for less than five minutes? He leaned toward me. I didn't pull away. I was just about to close my eyes, but then Patrick opened the closet door. Hey, this isn't algebra. Gross. My sister got a boyfriend in gross cooties. Patrick, stop embarrassing me. You have nothing to be embarrassed about. Hey, Patrick, want to go play catch in the quad? Sure. I've always wanted to pass a ball around with a bro. Aw, isn't it so sweet when a guy is nice to your siblings? That's my number one green flag. What are your green flags? Comment down below while I get back to the story. Daniel walked me to my classes the rest of the day to protect me from Kelsey. He was so perfect, from his completely poreless face to his luscious locks of hair that he just loved to play with, even if they looked like a mop. But when he brushed it back, he looked regal. The next day, Daniel and I took things up a notch. Hey, I was wondering, would you and Patrick like to come over for dinner tonight? What? Uh, Patrick too? Oh yeah, I mean, you and your family. You want to meet my family? Why? I like you. Isn't that what people do? Yeah, but it seems kind of fast. We haven't even had dinner yet. Just the two of us. So, is that a no? But just then, I was called into the principal's office. What am I gonna do? I have to leave, but I wanted to take that next step with Daniel. But also, my parents are so weird. Uh, quick is, it's a yes. See you tonight at 7. Text me your address. I ran down to Principal Weatherbottom's office, but when I entered, I saw that Mom was already there. I heard that you ripped a girl's wig off yesterday. Isabella, is this true? I, uh... That is unacceptable. You're suspended. What? Uh, hold up. At least let her explain. Don't need to. I know a rotten family when I see one. Excuse me? I am super gluing my butt to the seat until you take that back. But before I could even stop her, Mom had whipped out the glue gun. Ugh. I forgot my mom's new personality is intense arts and crafts lady. Mom, stop. I needed her to stop making things more difficult for me. So I pulled her out of the room as fast as I could. You're not helping at all. Let's just go home. Actually, first, let's get this chair off of you. But it was really stuck to her. Patrick and I ended up attaching wheels to the bottom and riding that home instead of mom's car. And then we all spent the rest of the afternoon detaching it from her butt. Great. Now I don't even have time to make dinner. And that's when I remembered. You know, my new friend Daniel actually invited us all over for dinner tonight, but you're probably busy crafting a spaceship or whatever your thing is this week. Did someone say free dinner? Did I forget to mention to you guys that my dad's new personality is a professional cheapskate? Our family went to Daniel's a little later. As he opened the door, dread washed over me because Daniel's mom was the principal. Welcome. You. Mom threw the flower she bought right in her face and stormed off. I'm sorry, Daniel and Principal Weather, but I mean bottom, but I think dinner may have to wait. We ran after my mom until we got home. Mom, calm down. You're being ridiculous. That's it, Isabella. We must leave. What? This wasn't fair. I had fought so hard just to stay at a place longer than two weeks. This time was supposed to be different. We need to be careful of people who call us rotten. I'm sorry, but one day you'll understand. We're moving and that's that. But before I could say anything, we were in a car off to the airport. I was furious. I wasn't going, no matter what. They were being ridiculous. But who could play at that game? We were already on the plane and I knew I had to act fast. Oh no, there's a bomb on the plane. It's in their bags. Isabella, what are you doing? This is serious. But I didn't care. I left the three of them there and ran off the plane. I knew mom and dad would be fine after the police found out the truth. I got back home and called Daniel to apologize about dinner, but he wouldn't answer. Was he also mad at me? And what's worse, when my parents or Patrick didn't come back after 24 hours, I started to feel really, really guilty. Were they okay? Tears welled up in my eyes. What if my family never came back? What if they were locked away forever and it was all my fault. I was so worried, so I called Daniel again, but he didn't answer. I texted him my address and asked him to come over. Suddenly, I heard a knock on the door. Uh, hello? I opened the door, and two giant men tackled me to the ground. Gotcha. Let go of me. Yes, boss. We've got her too. hi -ya! Mom! Dad! They burst in through the door and kicked the two burly men straight in the face, knocking them out instantly and tying them up. What? How? We took self-defense classes. Remember all those Jackie Chan movies I 
used to watch. Yeah, how could I forget? I wore pillows for shoes all that week, yes. and she kept breaking vases when she was practicing her karate moves. Are you okay? Mom, Dad, I'm so sorry about the plane. And who are these guys? We should have been honest with you. Honest? About what? And that's when my mom told me everything. When you were little, Dad and I were key witnesses to a trial that led to the arrest of a notorious biotech engineer known as the Dragon. He was doing unethical experiments on babies and children. The FBI found him with a child, and since no one claimed the child after the trial, we decided to adopt him. Patrick! Yes, but since then, some men have been chasing us, so we moved and changed personalities to help keep us safe. We never told you to protect you. The less you know, the better. My heart was filled with shame that I judged them so harshly. Wait, where's Patrick? You mean, he's not with you? No, he ran after you off the plane. We thought he had come home. We rushed to the police station to report the incident, but when we got there, we were surprised to hear that a detective was already on the case. Apparently, someone had witnessed him being kidnapped. They even showed us the CCTV footage of Patrick being chased and taken by someone in a van. There was something familiar about the guy driving, but I couldn't place it. I felt like this was all my fault, but surely there was something I could do to fix this. I could put Patrick's face on a milk carton, but that would take weeks of coordination. Maybe I should just tattoo a picture of Patrick to my face as punishment. Wait a second. That's it. That guy in the van. He had the same tattoo on his hand as Daniel? No. Daniel was too nice to have anything to do with this, and anyone could have a weird tattoo on their hand. But it was about Patrick. I had to tell the cops. So, they said they'd meet us at Daniel's. But when we got there, the police were sure taking their sweet time. I can't wait any longer. My baby may be in there. Mom, wait! I ran after her to stop her. But before I could, she burst through the surprisingly unlocked front door. Inside, Daniel and the principal, along with masked, muscular men, stood next to Patrick. Mom leapt at the goon. Daniel, let him go! This is for putting my dad in jail. Am I hearing this correctly? Daniel's dad is the dragon? And for escaping my men when I sent them after you. We had it all mapped out. School was the start, then dinner. But your mom had to ruin it all the time. So we came up with a new plan. And that's how we got Patrick. And that's how those two goons were at your house. You? I trusted you. You're gonna pay for this. And you, Miss Weatherbutt, you're a horrible principal. I'm not the principal, you idiot. And this isn't really Daniel. We kidnapped them, then used their faces by making realistic masks of them to steal their identities. How is that even possible? See, my dad was a genius. He even made this voice-changing device. If he hadn't been put away, imagine what he could have done for the world. No wonder people at school didn't suspect anything. Mom tackled her mortal enemy, and I reached out and ripped off Faye Daniel's mask. Shock! Such a sinister face underneath it. He went for me, but I used my mad bite skills to good use. And just then, the police barged into the room and tackled them all to the floor. Behind them, Dad entered triumphantly. Cops got here just in time. Glad my girls held them off. The fake criminals were taken away in handcuffs. It turned out that Dragon's wife and son had been tracking us all these years through Patrick as Dragon microchipped him before getting caught. But we moved so much that as soon as they were there, we were gone. Until this time, relieved, we ran over to Patrick. Whoa, that was intense. But you know, you could have just breathed on him. One whiff of your morning breath and they'd surrender immediately. Ugh, still annoying as ever. Well, that beeping noise now makes sense. I pulled my family in for the biggest bear hug ever. I'm so sorry for everything I put you through. I want to stay in one place, but only if that means we can all be together. That's what matters most. You know, Isabella, now that those two are locked away, I guess we don't have to hide anymore. That's right. We can stay here as long as we want. Staycation. Seriously? OMG, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll never call you weird ever again. Wait, you were calling us weird? <laughs> Kidding. We love you. And that's the story of how everything got back to normal. Well, at least after Patrick got his microchip surgically removed. Then everything was finally normal.